Thanks to everyone who's joining. We will get started in just another minute. Okay, I think we'll get started today. Uh, thank you all for joining us today and thank you to our expert panelists and moderator that are uh, joining us today. I'm Megan Kimitek with ACT, Director of Leadership and Awards. I will be kicking us off with a few housekeeping items and then handing it over to um, our panelists today. So with that, I will begin. Um, so as you all may or may not know, this is this webinar today is part of our larger series we've been working on in partnership with Zello. Um, We're grateful for their partnership and sponsorship of uh, a five part publication series as well as um, these webinars that are following uh, after the publications have gone live on our website. So if you haven't already, we hope you will check out all of the publications um, in this series on taking business to school and also some of the uh, webinars that we've already hosted have been posted to the website as well. With that, I also wanted to mention we have some upcoming webinars, um, actually one tomorrow on confronting isms in the classroom, um, elevator, um, excuse me, elevating the learner voice in CTE, um, and also a part three series in April. So uh, they are all found on this website. You can also watch them after the events as well. Um, also, if you are a non-member of ACT, we just would like to remind you that we would love you to join uh, ACT and be part of our uh, family. You can do that here. You can join, uh, find out more information about membership or feel free to message me in the chat and I can direct you to the director of our membership department. So, And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Eric, um, our moderator today. Eric Ripley has, has 23 years of professional experience in career and technical education, including his current role as the executive director of CTE and technology for the Grand Folks Public Schools uh, in North Dakota. As a proud CTE advocate, Eric serves uh, as the ACT Administration Division Vice President and also represents Region 5 in serving on the NCLA Board of Directors. Eric is passionate about the importance of career and technical education within public education and expanding opportunities for, for all students to partake in CTE. Eric is married to Sadie and has three sons, Toby, Grady, and Ethan. Uh, thanks, Eric, for your time today. I always enjoy working with you, and I will hand it off to you. Well, thanks a lot, Megan. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure certainly to be here today uh, and to be part of this uh, exciting webinar series. Uh, as, as Megan indicated, um, you know, Zello and, and ACT are partnering to do a, a kind of a five-part publication series and certainly would, would echo uh, the call to, for everybody to go out to, to the website to be able to see not only this publication, um, but also those that uh, precede it and those that will come after it. Because I think what they stand for is um, just a, a great example of best practices um, across the nation on, on what a strong partnership can be. Uh, between industry and our, our educational classrooms. So proud to be part of this and certainly um, talking about Grand Forks, that's my that's my home area and my uh, the district that I am uh, fortunate enough to serve with. So I'm pretty familiar with this partnership and excited to have the, the following individuals on the webinar today to help speak more towards it. Um, first off, we have Mike Billups. Mike is the lead systems engineer for Northrop Grumman at the North Dakota Grand Sky facility. Mike has been working as an engineer for 24 years. He has a bachelor's in electrical electronics engineering, a master's in engineering management, uh, and numerous certificates. Mike has worked for Northrop Grumman in engineering and management for 17 years. And just if he wasn't busy enough, he decided this year to start teaching a graduate class in digital engineering at the University of North Dakota. Um, we welcome Mike to, to the call and he'll be speaking from the industry side of things with Northrop Grumman. Uh, we also have Joseph Osgarden. 
Uh, Mr. Osgarden is uh, one of our instructors in our CT program here in the district. Uh, he's also the robotics program advisor. Uh, he's a science teacher at Red River High School uh, in, in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and for the past nine years, as well as the advisor of not only Science Olympiad, but also our competitive Bex Robotics um, organization and club. He has coached Bex Robotics for the last five years and has had teams qualify for the World Championship in each of those five previous years. And while not working, he enjoys spending time with his wife and four wonderful children. So, Mr. Osgarden, welcome uh, to the panel today. And last, but certainly not least, uh, our panel of experts, we have Broden Dietrich. Broden is currently attending the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities, uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul, Minnesota, for aerospace engineering. He enjoys engaging in extracurricular activities such as club running and competitive robotics. And Broden is kind of our poster child example of, of the partnership that has been developed between Northrop Grumman and our school district, as he has participated in a number of those initiatives um, graduated last year and is now uh, pursuing uh, his aerospace engineering degree uh, at the post-secondary level. So he can certainly speak from the student's perspective as somebody who's gone through these initiatives. So welcome to Broden. Uh, again, pleasure to be part of this and, and uh, get a chance to facilitate that. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of kick off uh, the, the question part of this. And, and I think, Mike, I'm going to ask you to take over this first one. Um, can you just provide a, a quick background on how Northrop Grumman and the Grand Forks Public Schools collaborate successfully to develop this type of industry um, community classroom partnership. Sure. So the, the high school immersion program that we that uh, Broden was part of is a program that Northrop Grumman does at a lot of different sites. And it's been very successful and we've got a lot of high school interns across the country at our many sites. Northrop Grumman is a very large company. We have sites across the country and across the world. Um, I think the advantage with uh, Grand Forks, the area, is the collaboration and the interest. The, the city and the region, the university, the school districts, we've had amazing uh, collaboration and support from everybody here. And the willingness to do this and willingness to work with the industry has made the programs that we brought up here to work with the local area very, very successful. And Broden is a good example about that. Um, with the, the program last year, they were able to create a drone and work with some of our, our engineers on site. So we don't just bring in the interns in, whether they're high school or college, and give them some menial tasks and stuff to do. We give them a challenge. We give them real work and we immerse them in there so they have real industry experience. And it's been amazing working with the Grand Forks School District, the city of Grand Forks, the region, UND. Um, it's just been a very good relationship and everybody's been very willing and, and interested in doing this. So I think that's the key to it is how much the city, the region, the districts, the schools are, are interested in working with us and provide the support to do it. That, that's a great intro. And, and maybe before we turn it over to the other two for kind of their comments, um, Mike, can you just give a quick overview uh, for those people that may not be familiar with Northrop Grumman, kind of the um, and, and it's, a, it's a worldwide um, um, uh, organization, but uh, perhaps if, if, it's, if people don't have a, an understanding of what Northrop Grumman is, can you provide a quick overview of that? Sure. Northrop Grumman is primarily, primarily a defense contractor. We are one of the largest defense contractors in the world. Um, aerospace industry is our primary focus. We do everything from aircraft to missile defense systems um, to armaments, rockets, space systems. Our biggest areas are in the space area. Uh, as part of our space sector, the company has four sectors. Space sector, we do communication satellites, uh, ISR satellites. Um, we do rockets. Um, we launch a bunch of stuff for, for the military as well for, uh, as private sector. The ground-based strategic defense, which is the modernization of the Minutemans, that is a Northrop Grumman product. Then in our aerospace systems or our aeronautic systems, B-21 bomber, the B-2 bomber, um, the Global Hawk, which is very relevant to the Grand Forks area, that the mission is at Grand Forks Air Force Base. Those have been the programs I've been working on, the autonomous and unmanned systems for most of my career with Northrop Grumman. But we also do uh, logistics and cybersecurity and a bunch of other stuff. 96,000 employees worldwide, I think it may be a little bit more than that. 
Um, it's a very, very good company. I've been with the company, uh, well, it's actually been almost 18 years now. And um, I, I really enjoy it. We advance technology in many areas, uh, bleeding technology, doing things that nobody else can. Uh, the slogan is making the, uh, the impossible possible. And we do that every day. And we do that with great people like Broden that come and work with us and really push the boundaries of what can be done. That, that's tremendous. And, and I think uh, it, it's not only uh, very impressive of what the, the kind of work that Northrop Grumman is involved with, but also then um, kind of that genuine interest to be able to collaborate and partner um, at the secondary and, and post-secondary level. So um, on that first question about what makes this partnership successful, uh, Mr. Rosgarden, can you speak a little bit to, uh, from your perspective as the instructor? Yeah, really the success here um, comes from just an open line of communication between us. Um, and it's, it's one that's got some priority. Um, I know anytime that we're looking for a connection with Northrop Grumman that I can ask for that. And there's a response that comes very quickly. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of the runaround, but um, our connection with Northrop Grumman um, goes back five years from when I, at least personally, from when I started robotics. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but um, yeah, that collaboration between us and starting the HIP program and getting students from our school involved with them directly, um, it's, it's been awesome. So don't have a lot to add, but nothing but high things to say. That's great. And then maybe just to round that up, uh, Broden, anything on that question number one? Um, really just, uh, reinforcing that, you know, when you, when you're talking to other people, you, you know, here on campus and they're like, oh, um, you have this intern experience right out of high school. What was that like? What did you, what did you actually do? You just came out of high school and to be able to say, this is the project I work on. I worked with these engineers, you know, I had these tasks and I actually got work done there. I mean, that's really what the program's all about. That's certainly impressive and provides that competitive advantage, I think, for our, our CT students that take advantage of those types of opportunities, for sure. Let's move into question number two. Um, Joey, we're going to go ahead and start with you on this. How does Northrop Grumman's uh, support for STEM education, specifically uh, in Grand Forks, help students get ahead before they graduate high school? Yeah, so, I mean, just to start with a little bit of history as far as how that connection got started. Um, five years ago, we started a VEX robotics program um, here in Grand Forks Public Schools. Um, and I remember our first year, everything was pretty small in our state, um, but we qualified for Worlds. Um, and when you qualify for Worlds, you're, you're invited to the VEX Robotics World Championship sponsored by Northrop Grumman. And I remember seeing that and going, I think we got one of those here in Grand Forks. Um, and, and that's where the connection really started, uh, really opened up a line of communication and said, hey, we're going to this thing sponsored by you. Any chance we could get um, at the start, hey, can we get some help um, in order to make that happen? And they graciously did, which was amazing. Um, and then over the years, a couple of years later, this started, uh, brought the HIP program, um, which Broden was part of the, the very first year of that and the applications that went in there. Um, and then even as recent as yesterday, we were just out to the Grand Sky facility um, with about 40 high school students um, touring and seeing everything that Northrop Grumman had to offer from um, their command centers where they can run uh, different operations from all sorts of level of secrecy um, to getting to see the global hawks in person, which uh, the students I saw today are still talking about all the time. Uh, so that's uh, the, the connection there uh, has been a great one. Um, as far as getting them ahead, um, the excitement that the kids have of having something as real and tangible as um, a company like Northrop Grumman in our area um, has been huge. So um, definitely very glad that I made that connection that first year um, and definitely glad for the continued relationship that we have there. That's great. Broden, I, as I indicated in your intro, you're, you're a great example of somebody who has, has experienced a number of these different um, activities throughout your time, starting all the way back, really, honestly, in middle school. You want to talk a little bit about um, those experiences a little bit and how they've helped prepare you um, now that you're at the post-secondary level? 
Yeah, sure. So back when I was in seventh grade, the first experience that I kind of got with this was the opportunity to go to space camp, which was all sponsored by Northrop Grumman. I didn't have to worry about, you know, um, getting there, paying for it, whatever, you know, I had that whole trip. And that's really what I credit to sparking my interest in space exploration, which I still have to this day. Um, and then throughout high school, there's the, the Project Lead the Way classes that kind of built my interest in engineering. I'm already a guy who likes math and science and, you know, being able to apply those to, you know, real problems um, and keep building off of that, as well as extracurricular activities, such as, you know, the robotics, Skills USA, all of that, which Northrop has support through, um, like, to Mr. Osgarden and whatnot through really built my uh, um, skills palette through that. And through all of that, I ended up being put in touch with the HIP internship program uh, through Mr. Osgarden and robotics and all of that, which kind of built all the way through to my experiences this summer. That's terrific. And, and Mike, do you wanna talk a little bit about Northrop Grumman's interest in supporting STEM initiatives specifically? We're talking about trying to to grow those opportunities, um, you know, the interest of Northrop Grumman in supporting STEM specifically. Sure, so STEM is something, I, I'll talk a little bit of my experience as well. STEM is something that doesn't get addressed enough. And there's a couple of things from Northrop Grumman's perspective that are very critical. Um, I first got involved in the problem with getting kids into STEM back when I was in university, when I was getting my bachelor's degree and kind of the perception of what engineering was back then, it, it wasn't perceived as a, a cool you know, degree to go in. It was just the, well, those are the nerds. Um, but we need people in STEM degrees. And there's also, I think this perception of, you know, what you do as an engineer can be boring and not fun. And that's, that's simply not true. Um, so progress through the years, my, through my career, and you get to Northrop Grumman, and then we find a problem where there's a lot of students that we can't hire for a number of reasons. Obviously, as a defense contractor, there are restrictions on who we can hire. And then we go and we look out there, and there's a lot of kids in this country that are just not interested in getting STEM. Either they've had a bad experience with math, which... Um, my dad was a mathematician and a college professor, and he used to talk about math anxiety 30, 40 years ago or more. And that sets a lot of kids on a road where they're not going to go into it. There's, there's, there's got to be something out there that's easier, that's more fun, that's not math. So getting kids involved, and like Broden said, in things like space camp, open doors and show them things about STEM that they may not have known or may not have been exposed to. You know, they may have gone to, had a science class, a physics class or something like that, that, you know, maybe they didn't have a great teacher or maybe the material was difficult and they just kind of gave up or, or math. I mean, that, that happens to a lot of people. Showing them that it's worth it. That, well, that struggle is worth it because then you get to go and work on really cool stuff and we have really cool stuff out at Grand Sky. So showing kids like Broden that, this is engineering. You get to come in and work on a very big, very powerful, basically video game. And that is engineering. There is real engineering work to be done on that in this digital engineering field, like what I've been started teaching. And it's not just a video game, but boy, does it look like a video game. And man, is there some fun stuff associated with it or space exploration. You can build, I've got a friend in Gilbert, Arizona, who just started a couple of years ago on a satellite program down there. He works for Northrop Grumman. He has a satellite that launched two months ago in space now, and he's the lead engineer on it. He has a satellite in space. Exposing kids to something like that starts getting them excited about it. And then it's not just, you know, numbers on a piece of paper or a spreadsheet. It's real world stuff that comes out of STEM. So for us, it feeds the pipeline. It gives us really good engineers down the road, you know, that go on to graduate and postgraduate degrees and learn things and, and that's why we're involved in doing things like the digital engineering curriculum is because then we can influence and make sure that they have the skills and they have the knowledge and they think the way that, that we need them to think to solve those tough problems. And it's not just for Northrop Grumman, it's for the industry in general, because as a defense contractor, if we don't get good engineers to solve the tough problems, that's a national security issue. 
And the people don't always think about that, but that's really important. And for Northrop, we've got to have good engineers and we've got to have a bunch. I mean, we've got three or 4,000 job openings right now across the country, the company. How are we going to fill them if nobody's going to go into these? You know, a lot of them are not engineering, but we have a lot of engineering jobs available. If we don't have kids getting interested in STEM, who's going to fill the jobs? I hope to retire in 10 years. Somebody better pick up the slack where I leave, you know? So there's always that, that need for the pipeline of really good engineers. And, and we need to address, you know, kids in high school so that they start thinking about it. And we also need to address, you know, put some emphasis, not just on, you know, kids in high school, but make sure that we include, you know, women, people of color, all those diverse areas, they're underrepresented and they're areas where people don't think they can go into engineering, but they can. And we've got to get those kids young and early and get them excited and see things like the robotics programs and start having them think that this is cool. So that's what, it, that's the importance for, for Northrop Grumman. And I'm a little passionate about it. Hey, I, I love the passion. Uh, and, and I think as we look at pipeline shortages in a lot of our areas, I think CT is a, is a real viable solution, but it really does start with that awareness, um, positive experiences, and, and not only that um, awareness, but also the understanding that as a student, um, I can do this and, and I can be good at this. And, and that ultimately will keep their uh, career choices uh, wide for them. Let's talk a little about, you know, Broden, I want to start with you on this one is, you know, you know, look back at this program. Um, right now you are pursuing your aerospace engineering degree. So as you reflect back, how did your experiences with this partnership with Northrop Grumman assist you with your career goal growth and then also networking opportunities for you? Yeah, so I'd say the combination of all of the um, things I talked about earlier have really jump-started my career path and given me a competitive edge over some of my other peers in the field. Um, I now have a network of engineers who are actually in the field that I can go to talk to if I need help. Um, I have valuable real-world experience that I can actually talk about along with everyone and all the experience I have here at the U. Um, the program also helped me refine my personal interests in aerospace engineering because everyone going into college always has that uncertainty like am I really here doing the right thing like is this really what I want to go into and you see that a lot with the other people freshman year and even into sophomore year and being able to work at Northrop this summer and kind of get excited about the different um, projects that they have there that Mike was talking about earlier really like internally to me said yes, this is what I want to go down to. It really um, helped me secure what my educational plan will be for the next four years. And talking to my peers at the university, it's easy to see that opportunities like this are actually kind of hard to come by. And having experience before even attending college uh, will have just a huge impact for my future career opportunities. That's, that's really well said. Um, Joseph, when, when you, you referenced you had just taken a group of students out to the Grand Sky facility yesterday. So again, the value of a field trip, um, again, helping students kind of make uh, maybe future uh, decisions related to their career paths. Um, just speak a little bit towards that and kind of from your perspective as an instructor. Yeah, um, I mean, there's really nothing or no one much more uh, clueless about their future than a high school student. Um, I guess is how I would put that. And so any exposure to um, STEM fields like this is, is huge for them to, in helping to figure out, well, where do I want to go? Um, and what we saw yesterday was, oh, well, there's plenty of jobs. If I'm looking at more of an IT standpoint, um, the IT facilities in, in a place like this is massive and huge. Um, it's going to require a lot of people with a lot of very special skills to do stuff like that. Um, and so they're getting exposed to everything that goes there. Um, the actual hardware needs uh, and everything that goes on uh, to set up these control rooms is ridiculous. Um, so the, the field trip opportunities are just big for getting exposure. Um, we took a trip earlier this year to a local wind blade manufacturer, LM Wind Power. Um, and there too, the kids were like, I had no idea this is what happened in this giant building in town. Um, and we've got even more uh, field trip opportunities set up for later this year um, to check out some more local places just to get that exposure. Um, unfortunately, they, 
in other areas, they just don't get that. Um, hey, this is a thing you can do. This is what you can decide to do for the rest of your life. They don't have those exposures anywhere else um, other than here. And, and focusing on STEM and doing what we can to support that is, is big. We started the STEM camp this last summer, um, thanks to a grant from the DOD. That's huge uh, and is working to get more kids at a younger age involved with it. We have VEX Robotics from elementary school all the way up to high school um, as an option for kids to be a part of. Once again, um, getting them exposed that this is a thing you can do. Um, and it's not just a bunch of boys playing with robots. Uh, it's easily dominated by girls um, who are part of these programs and are having the biggest impact and are seeing the most success. So. That's great to hear that. I, I know you have uh, state robotics coming up here pretty soon and yep. certainly uh, wish all those competing teams the um, certainly great success. Um, it's been referenced a couple of times in some of the comments about this thing called the HIP program. And, and it, it stands for the High School Involvement Partnership. Um, so HIP, it's a mentoring program that Northrop Grumman has done in a lot of the different communities that they're based out of. Uh, Mike, you want to talk a little bit about how that mentorship program um, is, is developed and how that's um, you know, really a, a key component of the partnership efforts that you have with your um, you know, the educational community? Sure, I was exposed to it quite a while ago because Northrop has been doing this for quite some time. Um, back in, I'm from Southern California and I worked down there for 15 years, I believe. And, you know, there were some hit students and they would come in and they get a little overwhelmed and, um, you know, give them tasks and they do the tasks. And you know, a lot of the roles that I had down there, I didn't have much exposure to it because I was busy, I was doing things. Up here, because we're a smaller site, uh, I think it gives the, 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 the high school students an opportunity to be exposed to more engineers and, you know, working with the schools and working with the teachers and having those good relationships and contacts so that we can get, a lead, get leads on students that would really benefit for this, um, I think is really key. So then once we identify those students, then we, you know, we make the connections, we bring them in. And then the engineers on staff come up with challenges and like what they came up with uh, for Broden's team is, you know, go and build a drone and it has to pick up these different size objects. Uh, it was before we had the planes in the hangar. So we got to do it in the hangar, which was really cool. Um, but it, you know, then doing that gives them exposure to developing requirements, developing specifications, you know, how big does the the grappling, grappling thing need to be, how much weight does it need to do, all these kinds of things. So it's not just, you know, come in, here's a project, here's a couple of tasks off a project. We really give them a goal and it's something that they have to go and they have to chase after. So coming back and developing a goal like that with the, the engineers so that we know they're going to get exposure and they're going to get experience is really critical to this. Um, most of the other stuff is bureaucracy and, and we've got people that handle that. It, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm an engineer. <laughs> um, but it's been a very successful program for the company for a very long time. And we've seen, you know, for most of our HIP students, um, as you know, as well as our, our interns at the university level, they come back, you know, they, they have such a great experience working, working at Northrop Grumman or going through these programs that they come back. And we want them to come back because we're going to invest a lot of time and money into this and we want them to, to work for Northrop Grumman and be valuable members you know, of the company. And that's another thing I think that it offers is we talk about that. It's not just go work for the company, spend a summer working for the company. Okay, thanks, have good luck. No, it's come and work for us because you know, in the future, we, we, we may wanna hire you. We have jobs that we'd like to give you in the future. So that even gives it a bigger goal of, like Broden was talking about, planning for the future of, you know, not just like for me, when I got out of high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I took the tests and they said, well, engineering is the last thing you can, you should be doing. Well, my dad was a mathematician. My grandfather was an engineer. My uncle was an engineer. I'm like, you want to bet? Watch me. I'll go and do it. And so I became an engineer just because I'm stubborn. Um, 
having an opportunity where there's that real goal and that plan going forward, I didn't get into the stride of my engineering until probably five years after I had graduated. And then I kind of figured out, well, this is the path I need to go down. We're hoping that we can get high school students and say, this is the path I need to go down. So they don't worry about whether it's going to get them somewhere in the future. They know there's going to be a future. And here's how you get there. So then they can go and enjoy it. Enjoy being an engineer. No, that's that's great. And, you know, one of the topics I think that is is becoming um, emerging again as a, as a best practice, and it's probably always been there, is this idea of of internships, work-based learning experiences, how do we connect the classroom to a real world uh, learning situation? And, and the HIP program is a great example of that. Broden, as, as somebody who's gone through the HIP program, you just wanna talk a little bit about kind of your uh, experience. I know one of the comments you made at one point was of all the things that you've done, you know, the HIP was probably the one that was the most real world for you, right? But and I'm stealing your comments, but I'll let you speak towards that real briefly and, and kind of how that then leveraged itself, your experience in HIP, into um, your summer internship that you just did too. Yeah, I'd say my experience with Northrop is probably like the keystone, like the top of, you know, my um, engineering progression throughout high school. Uh, the drone project in particular that Mike was talking about earlier, that was really like a, a very challenging um, project to work on. Um, it took my partner and I, um, quite a few hours to, you know, design, get all of the um, materials we needed, make sure they were compatible. Um, we tried to fly it three or four times, and it turns out the battery was not com compatible with our motors, and it started on fire. And <laughs> even though it didn't work, it was a very valuable lesson on, you know, not everything works on the first, second, third, fourth try, and it really just, like, started. It was a very good real world, world experience in how the engineering process works. And it was a good introduction into the Grand Sky facility, the people that actually work there. I mean, on the first day, I already knew two or, the, two or three of the people because we'd been building the drone with them. We'd been asking them for help and we'd flown it with them or attempted to fly it with them. That's awesome. Well, that's, that's really, really cool. Um, all right, well, we're, we're caught to the, to the last question here and this is kind of for all panelists. Uh, we're certainly very proud of, of the partnership that the Grand Forks Public Schools has with Northrop Grumman. And, and to me, I think the biggest takeaway is that um, it, it's not a, a one and done. It's, it's a multiple number of initiatives. It's, it's that raindrop effect that you have multiple touch points with students throughout the process from an early age all the way, all the way through up um, to, um, again, the, the students experience like Broden's and in, in HIP and internship opportunities. Um, that's really what it takes to develop that pipeline. But um, I'm kind of curious, meet your perspectives. Um, what really is the roadmap then for other schools or industry partners um, that are trying to form or want to form a similar type of partnership to ensure that they're sustainable and they're successful like what we have right now between Grand Forks and uh, Northrop Grumman. So um, Mike, maybe I'll start with you with that question. Sure, I think there's a, a few key things to ensure that there's success in this. Um, you need to, you need relationships. I mean, bottom line, you need relationships. And for any company, um, I think you need to understand that there is value added here. You know, um, the expense realistically is not that much. Um, jokingly, interns are cheap. Uh, my management always loves to say that. But you get a lot of value out of that. And if you develop a program where you're not just kind of checking a box and saying we have interns, but really develop a program where those interns, you know, whether the high school or university come in and, or trades, it doesn't necessarily even be, have to be a degree uh, path, but that they really get something from it and the company gets something from it, then there's real value there. So you have to think about that. Don't just give them menial tasks. And then for the schools, understand that there is, you know, this is what you're supposed to be doing is you're supposed to be educating kids and encouraging kids and empowering kids so that they can be successful in life, you know, and it's not just engineering, any field, you should be doing these kinds of things. And because, you know, as a high school student, a lot of high school students are kind of lost, you know, they're, they're there because they have to be there and they don't necessarily have 
the goals. I mean, at one point in time, our society had more goals and apprenticeships and stuff like that. And, you know, some of it, you know, 40, 50 years ago was you're going to be an engineer, you're going to be a lawyer because I was an engineer or I was a lawyer. Um, nowadays, we need to give them with the variety of stuff that's out there, we need to give kids a goal and a purpose and a future and show them that, you know, going through school and getting this education is not just the, well, I'll never use it in the real world. Yeah, you will. You will use a lot of this stuff in the real world. And here's how. And here's how that path going forward is going to make you a successful person. Not just you got a big bank account and you got a house and a nice car, but you might have fun. You might enjoy it. And I tell you, there's some moments in my career at my previous company a long time ago and then at Northrop where, you know, there are times where it's been really hard and I've struggled and I, I you know, 15 hour days on a flight line in Northern California and it's been stressful. But even then I look at the things I've worked on and what they've done. Every time I go out in that hangar and those two planes that are in our hangar right now, I know what they've done. I know where they've been. I know the lives that they have influenced that they have impacted and the lives that they have saved, that's a big deal for me. And, you know, whether it's defense contracting like we are, or, you know, any other field showing the kids, this is the point, this is the goal, this is how you're going to impact the world, that matters. And building up that kind of story around it and saying, oh, by the way, here's the real world example of it, go work for Northrop Grumman for a summer and they're going to give you some real stuff to do, some real challenges. It, you know, it might be hard, but you're going to come out of that saying, wow, I can do that and I can make an impact. And I think that's really important for us to do. Um, it builds better adults. No, that's great. Uh, great comments there, Mike. Appreciate that. Uh, Joseph, from the educator's perspective, you know, what, what makes a strong uh, business um, education classroom partnership and what what needs to be there in order for it to be successful like this one is with us? You know, the biggest thing uh, is communication. Uh, every single step of the way um, from the initial step of just be willing to have that conversation for that first time and say, hey, can you tell us about what you guys do? Can we start working together? Can we do, um, can we do some things together? Um, that's, that's an important first step. And, and sometimes that's hard on both ends, um, both for industry to know, well, who do I contact necessarily to start a relationship like this? And for the teacher side to say, well, who do I contact to do this? And so it, it, you just got to get the ball rolling um, and you got to start that communication. Um, and then it's important to keep that communication happening. It, it's been so hard over the last two years with COVID to um, keep that communication really solid because um, we, we can't see people in person. We, we use platforms like Zoom instead. Um, and I'm hoping we can turn that around soon and we can do more in person um, connections like that. Um, and also there needs to be some give and take uh, to understand that this relationship is, is a two-sided thing, right? There, there's things that a school can do to help support um, industries like helping uh, build up awesome students like Broden um, to be part of their future workforce. workforce. Um, but then there's also things that uh, we as teachers um, love the help from, from industry level, whether um, you know, it might be judges for state robotics in the, the coming week and having knowledgeable engineers for that. Um, there, uh, to speakers in classrooms to start at least baby steps towards learning what's going on with industries. Um, but it's just be that willingness to get the ball rolling the first time um, and making sure that that is a good relationship all around. Um, and really the rest of it really it takes care of itself, um, provided you, you gave it the necessary steps to begin with. No, I think that's great. I think it's, it's again, it's, you got to have willingness from both sides uh, to be able to make it work. And and then um, again, that strong relationship communication, those are great points. So um, Broder, I'm gonna give you kind of the last uh, comment on this question as, as again, a student who's gone through the process and is still uh, going through it at the post-secondary level. Um, you know, you're the student that's that ultimate we're trying to, to serve. And so 
uh, from your perspective, what makes these partnerships um, not only successful, but also important from a student's perspective? Yeah, I would say I agree mostly with what Joseph had to say from having these programs available and effectively communicating them to the students and letting them know these opportunities do exist. If it wasn't for Mr. Osgarden's dedication to me throughout four years of my high school experience, giving me those one to two hours a day after class to, you know, build my skills and then him ultimately reaching out to me saying, hey, here's this HIP internship um, program. I think you should apply for this. None of this would have ever happened for me. And I would say most of the students I know, and I can attest that on campus, there are many, many, many students available who would be willing to gain uh, hands-on experience and participate in programs such as this if the opportunity arose and if there was people there to say, hey, this is out there for you. So communication to students and the hands-on opportunities to get these students involved and excited, I'd say is, is really the biggest step that employers and teachers can take. No, I think that's well said. And so I, I just wanted to uh, extend a uh, thank you to the, the panelists, to, to Mike and Joseph and Broden uh, for your time today um, and uh, for sharing this really uh, great partnership that we have. Hopefully it serves as a best practice for, for others. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Megan. Thanks, Eric. And I just wanna piggyback your uh, gratitude. We are at ACT are so thankful to all, all four of you for your time today and your expertise and, and giving some great advice to our members on how to replicate programs like this in their own practices. So thank you all for your time and, and expertise. Also the recording for this will be posted on our webinars uh, website on ACTE. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll put my uh, email in the chat right now. Otherwise, we, we are grateful for everyone who joined us today and we hope to see you on a uh, webinar soon, specifically maybe tomorrow. So thanks again, everyone.